everyone. Uh, it's exciting to be a part of Women Tech Global Conference. That's within the comforts of my home. So I hope all are doing well. Um, I'm Anand Yayasi and, and I'm currently doing my third year of undergraduation in Applied Electronics and Instrumentation Engineering from College of Engineering to Vancouver. So and I'm interested in uh, quantum computing, tech policy, mathematics and artificial intelligence. So um, feel free to uh, hit me up if you want to have a simple chat about the uh, aforementioned fields or if you want to collaborate with me. So um, moving on, uh, today I'll be giving a very small talk on quantum technology and its impact on society. So uh, just to be sure that everyone's on the same page, I would first give an introduction to quantum, quantum technology, then move on to ask why it is important to evaluate the impact of an emerging technology on society. So uh, it's going to be a 10 minute session and we, we've got a lot to cover. So brace yourselves. So um, um, first of all, we need to know about the progress of classical computers. That is the ones that we already have to get an understanding of quantum computers. So uh, computer parts are approaching the size of an atom. So though as simple as it may sound, why would that be a problem? A computer is made up of very simple components. The main memory, which represents data, the ALU, uh, the arithmetic logic unit, uh, which is the means of processing data, and the control unit, which is for control mechanisms. Now, a circuit chip of a computer is made of basic modules that do basic functions like adding two numbers. And these modules are made of logic gates, like your AND, your NOT, your OR gates, all right? And these logic gates are in turn made of transistors. Now, before we move on to transistors, uh, I would like to talk about Moore's law, which is more like a thumb rule than a law, all right? So, um, Moore's law gives an insight into the steady rate of miniaturization of technology. So basically, it states that the number of transistors on a microchip doubles every two years, though the cost of computers will be half which is uh, which basically means that the size of transistors is steadily decreasing as we progress all right so now coming back to transistors from an electrical point of view there are electrical switches um, that can block electrons from moving in one direction and from a computer science point of view they can be seen as the simplest form of a data processor in computers so uh, a transistor is basically a switch that can either block or open the way for information coming through. Now, coming back to Moore's law, a typical scale for uh, transistors is now 14 nanometers. Since transistors are shrinking to the size of only a few atoms, electrons may just uh, transfer themselves to the other side of a block passage, which is basically quantum tunneling. So, quantum tunneling uh, is a quantum mechanical phenomenon where a wave function can propagate through a potential barrier. And this can be a real barrier for our technological progress. Hence, um, just a moment, yeah. Uh, uh, hence, yeah. Uh, hence, scientists and engineers need to use these weird quantum pro properties that we don't see in our macro world, but which kick in at atomic level to their advantage by building quantum computers. So, uh, a quantum computer uh, is, uh, is uh, it's a device that uses quantum mechanical phenomena to perform operations on data. So they are exponentially powerful, but at the same time expensive to build. Well, at least for now. And obviously they work differently, just like how quantum mechanics is different from classical mechanics. So now major companies and researchers uh, are investing in this technology. Uh, now let's talk about quantum supremacy. Um, so. Quantum supremacy, it's a term which was coined in uh, 2017, which simply means the ability of a quantum computer to solve a problem that a classical computer cannot in any feasible amount of time. All right, so uh, in 2019, Google claimed that its quantum processor comprising of 53 qubits, Sycamore, completed a task in 200 seconds that a state-of-the-art supercomputer would take 10,000 years to finish. Thus, uh, Google claimed to have achieved quantum supremacy. However, soon enough, IBM contested the claim with a counter argument, saying the task would only take 
2.5 days on a classical computer like summit which is uh, summit being the most powerful classical computer in the world either ways this was a huge leap for humanity all right so now uh, companies like ibm and amazon they provide online platforms for people like us to access a set of their prototype quantum processors via cloud and this is what you call cloud based quantum computing this can be used to run algorithms and experiments and explore tutorials and simulations so basically as a user you can sit at home and interact with a quantum processor using your home or a classical computer all right so uh, basically all this amounts to the hopes of a far better and even technologically different tomorrow so uh, now quantum technology has a plethora of applications all right um, a quantum computer can process complex problems in very less time which can maybe take thousands of years for a traditional computer to complete similarly um, classical computers are terrible at simulating quantum systems when compared to quantum computers which open up the opportunity for pharmaceutical research helping with drug design and development and considering our current global situation this does some prom promising right so uh, similarly financial modeling artificial intelligence and machine learning logistic optimization optimization and so on are areas where quantum technology is going to come in handy with its ability to simulate and solve complex computations um but this is the good side of it what are some of the things that we have to be careful about uh so i hope you guys have heard about rsa rsa is rebest shamir edelman it is an algorithm used by modern computers to encrypt and decrypt messages and is widely used for secure data transmission all right the security of rsa relies on the practical difficulty of factoring the product of two large prime numbers now shor's algorithm is a quantum computer algorithm for integer factorization which is exactly what rsa is based upon so basically shor's algorithm has the potential to break the common crypto system rsa with a large quantum computer currently we don't have one but it's it is crucial to gauge the implications of future developments in quantum technology now technology has advanced to be a part of the of, of our social fabric all right and uh, with every innovation impacting humans and as individuals and humanity as a whole hence the social scenario revolving around the growth of quantum related innovations is different from the setting when classical computing was progressing so emerging technologies often take time to evolve with legal frameworks ethical legal frameworks that minimize their negative implications on society without having to limit their uh, future innovations so even now humanity uh, has not been able to evaluate the full potential of artificial intelligence hence venturing into quantum technology without the necessary precautions can be detrimental to us as a global community um we do have classical encryption algorithms and quantum cryptography for the post quantum world to uh, post quantum world to deal with the risks that come with the developments in quantum technology regarding cyber security however with um, countries and technical companies already investing and researching in the field apart from working on technological interventions to navigate the potential risks of quantum technology technologists like us or legislators and policy makers should work to formulate ethical legal guidelines that clarify the ambiguities related to this area so awareness should be increased regarding quantum computing within and around the common public so as to encourage more discourse and inspiration should be drawn from existing legal frameworks that work with ai and policies related to data hence as we grow as a global community with emerging technological interventions it is highly essential that we evaluate the social and cultural impact of such changes and undertake measures um, uh, to talk into take into consideration the well-being of our civilization so i hope uh, you have got an idea about quantum technology its social implications and as to why it's important to gauge its uh, implications on society to formulate ethical and legal guidelines guidelines so if you find this interesting do read more about it and if you want to have a small chit chat about it feel free to connect with me over linkedin so that was it thank you so much for listening in uh, thank you so much guys so, yeah have a wonderful day